To use our SIMD UTF library, you need a recent compiler supporting the C11 standard. Most C compilers today do support the C11 standard, so you should be okay. Next, you need to grab the code from the library. So you can take the simdutf.h and simdutf.cpp files from our um, recent release, for example. You can then drop these files into your project when you're ready to go. As an example, let us consider this simple code that will simply take uh, a UTF-8 input and check whether it's valid. So for my example, I'm using a four character sequence made of the characters one, two, three, and four. Because it's an ASCII input, I do know that it's automatically valid UTF-8. As you can see, I'm using the SIMD UTF namespace. So in C++, we have namespace that distinguish um, your functions from the function of a library. And then I've got this simple function called validate UTF-8, which takes a pointer to a car character followed by a length parameter. And then, and then I'm ready to go. I get back a Boolean that tells me whether this is valid UTF-8 or not. This function is super fast and should run at up to tens of gigabytes per second. Sometimes before you want to convert UTF-8 to UTF-16, you, you'd like to know how much storage the resulting UTF-16 string will require. So for that purpose, we've got a function called UTF-16 length from UTF-8. Again, it's somewhat similar to the validate function. We just take a pointer to the UTF-8 source, which in our case is a car uh, pointer, and then we've got the length parameter. It returns the number of 16-bit words that we expect a UTF-16 string to uh, require for storing the input. In this case, it would return four because of the simple case, uh, the simple ASCII case. So once you've got this information and you, you know how much storage is needed, then you can do the, you can allocate to memory and and do the transcoding. This this next example, code example, is, is basically an extension of the previous one. So again, we take our ASCII input, we uh, figure out its length, which is going to be four in this case. Then we compute, uh, we do one scan. It's very, very, very fast to determine how much storage we're going to need. Then we allocate the storage. So the SIMD UTF uh, library is as much as possible non-allocating. So the user is responsible for allocating to memory, and that's by design because allocation uh, is error prone, and, and very often it's be best left uh, to the user to determine how they want to manage their memory. So in this case, I allocate my memory using uh, a new call, and I store the result in a unique uh, pointer. Um, that's all standard C++. Then I call the function convert UTF-8 to UTF-16. Again, I'm using a source pointer, a length, and then I'm going to provide a, uh, an output pointer. I'm responsible as the, as the user of the library to make sure that the output pointer points to uh, a sufficient uh, number of uh, bytes, right? And in this case, I know it's safe because I've, I've, I've determined the, 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 the correct number of uh, 16 bit words that I would need using the UTF 16 length from UTF 8 function. I could also have allocated more memory. So uh, this is just a strict minimum. So if, if, you, if you point to a very, very large region in memory, that would be fine too. And then, of course, after the, the, the conversion, it returns how many uh, words were written. In this case, of course, it's going to match my expectation. Um, for one thing, because I've got a valid string. If my uh, string was not valid, then this would return zero. So there would be, uh, it would detect an error. 
And also, if I had allocated much more memory just to be safe, let's say I had allocated a gigabyte, and I, 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 I was interested in figuring out ahead of time how much memory I needed precisely, then this return value would be very useful because it would tell me exactly how much memory, how much memory I used, actually. Of course, you can go in reverse. So you can, you can just uh, do the same thing. So you can use an ASCII string, a four character ASCII string, but this, this time I'm going to allocate it using UTF-16 words. So my pointer there is going to uh, point to uh, four characters, but each character is going to use 16 bits. Again, I can check and validate it. Uh, in this instance, because my input is ASCII, I know it's going to be okay. It's going to uh, say that it's a valid uh, UTF-16 uh, string. Again, just like in the UTF-8 uh, uh, case, I can try to predict the output size of a UTF-16 to UTF-8 transcoding. This time the function is called UTF-8 length from UTF-16. Because in my simple example, it's just ASCII, I know that the answer is going to be four. So I have four 16 bit words. And if I convert them to UTF-8, it's going to output four bytes. Finally, I can do the full routine where I, I start my, with my UTF-16 input. I try to deduce how many bytes I'm going to need for storage after the transcoding, I allocate the memory that I need. In this case, I use a new car um, operator and I store the result in a totally standard C++ Unique PTR. You don't have to use a Unique PTR. This is just my doing. You can store it wherever you, you like. And then I do the conversion. Again, the conversion in this case is going to be non-allocating. So it doesn't throw, there's no exceptions and there's no, there's no memory allocated. So it's not very error prone. If the, the input is valid, then it's going to return um, the right answer. So it's going to return this case four. If the, if the, the value was not valid, then it would return zero indicating an error of some kind. Again, to convert UTF-16 to UTF-8 function takes a pointer to my input. In this case, it must be a car 16 input. Um, it needs a length parameter and it needs an output parameter. Again, the, the output parameter, I need to have allocated enough, a sufficient number of bytes. So it must be at least four, it could be more. And then the whole function, as I said, in this case, would return four. So that is, so there are more functions in uh, the library, but this is the core uh, part of the library. And as you can see, or hope you, you can see, it's relatively easy to use. And that's bit by design. We try to keep it really uh, simple. There are no objects. There's no uh, um, fanciful exceptions to manage. It's all um, straightforward. Thank you.